Okay, good morning, church. Uh, we're just so glad that you're able to join us in this service. I hope that you've come with a heart of expectation that God's going to move even in your own house, in your own room. And if you have your Bibles, you can just turn with me to Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. That's Hosea, Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. It says, Come, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. And as surely as the sun rises, He will come. He will come like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. I'm going to read that again. It says, Come, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. And as surely as the sun rises, He will come. He will come like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. And church, that's our promise. That's a, it's a guarantee that even as we acknowledge who He is and what He's done in our lives, He will come. And when God comes, He comes with everything that He is. Peace, joy, healing, breakthrough. So why don't you just close your eyes and just begin to acknowledge who He is and what He's done in our lives. Just tell Him, He's been good to you. So, so good to us you've been. Let's sing louder than the mountain in front of us. Louder than the trials. God, even we were faithless, God, you were faithful. In times of strife, God, you are our peace. Lord, you are our fortress, our shelter. Oh, so just acknowledge who he is. The great I am, the prince of peace. That's who he is, that's who he is. God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, that's who you've been to us, God. And that's our declaration this morning, God, that you've been all that you said you are. Oh, so come on, just get a little louder. A little louder, just sing it to him, yeah. Sing a song of praise, a song of thanksgiving. A song of praise, a song of praise to you. We lift a song of praise to you again. We lift a song of praise to you again. A song of praise to you again. This God. We lift a song of praise to you again. Sing it out. We lift a song of praise to you again. Oh, we lift a song of praise to you again. We lift a song of praise. Louder than the mountains, hey, we lift our song of praise to you again. One more time, sing. We lift our song of praise to you. Cause you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. We lift our song of praise to you. Oh, one more time, sing. Cause we lift our song of praise to you Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We lift a song of praise to you again. So come, Jesus, come. Let's God come like the rain. Come like the rain. Come like the rain. The 
Jesus, God, we come expectantly to for all that you're going to do, God, in our midst today. So we pour out our praise. Church, you can clap your hands. We're going to worship our Lord. Here we go. We waited for this day. We waited for this day. We are gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn.
So show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us, yeah. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. One more time, let's sing it out. So while we came today, sing it out. Show. why we came today, God. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire oh, Let's speak the name of Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every fear Over fear Every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadow.
Up his name, his name is the name above all names. Jesus, Jesus, oh, we shout your name, we glorify your name. Who can compare? Who can compare to this great? Compared to you, Lord. Oh, who can compare? Who can compare to you? Who can compare? Who can compare to you, Lord? Who can compare? Who can compare to you, Lord? to the Lord God who can compare to the Lord let's go we'll be a people that will be marked by your name God Something about his name, don't you know? Demons flee at the sound of his name. So I just take this time and just bless him in your own words. Something about his name. Never get tired of singing your name. We'll never get tired of singing your praise. We'll never get tired of singing of the name of Jesus. There's something about your name. We'll never get tired of singing your name. We'll never get tired of singing your praise. We'll never get tired of singing of the name of Jesus. There's something about your name. We'll never get tired of singing your name. We we'll never get tired singing your praise. We we'll never get tired singing of the name of Jesus. There's something about your name. We we'll never get tired singing your name. We we'll never get tired. We we'll never get tired. We we'll never get tired singing of the name of Jesus.
the worst? Did you sing that chorus one more time? Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life And break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire It's got being thrown, being thrown on our praises The only name that's worthy of our praise. The only name. The highest praise is the highest praise to you. Song long before. 
God, you deserve it all, God. None can compare to you, God. So be enthroned, God, on our praise, God. On our worship, God. Sorry, God, if we haven't placed you as our first priority, God. But this morning, God, we're, re we're recommitting, God, our lives to you, God.
God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Yes, God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Sing that again. God, you're so so good just look back over your own life the fact that we still have breath in our lungs is only because of his goodness so just raise a song of thanksgiving to him God, you're not, not just good, but so good, God. So good to us. 
Your mercies are new so every morning, so God. Your mercies are new every morning, so good to me. So good to me, so good to me, so good to me. You have, it's been so good to me, so good to me. Chorus one last time. Oh God, you're so good. Yes, you are, yes, you are. God, you're so good. Yes, God, you're so good. You're so good to me. One time, sing it out, God. Gracious Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercies in our lives. Thank you that we could worship, we could exalt, we could glorify your name. Knowing that you are God, that your kingdom rules uh, over all, that you are God over the nations. And Father, we thank you that you are God who makes wars to cease. You are God who brings peace to the islands, to the nations. And Father, we thank you that you, O oh God, are watching over your people. You are protecting us, you're delivering us. You're guiding our steps. Your eye is on us. And we rest, O oh God, in that assurance that the eyes of the Lord are towards us, his people. Father, you said in your word that you would keep your people alive even in the midst of famine. That the young lions may suffer lack and want, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. And so, Father, I thank you that you are faithful in providing for your people and caring for your people. We give you thanks for that, Father. And Lord, we pray that even in this service as we uh, spend time in your word and prayer. Minister to each one of us. Today, as your word goes forth, let truth invade our lives. And let every work of the enemy be destroyed. Let Satan stand before us defeated, crushed underneath our feet, and knowing that we are people who know the truth and who walk in it, and who walk in everything God has made available to us. Let Satan be trampled underneath our feet even today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Greetings. We welcome each one of you. Thank you for joining us today in this online service. We especially greet those of you who are part of the church congregation here in Bangalore. We welcome you. We greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining with us and uh, uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to begin uh, to meet in person and uh, begin to pick that up back again. But thank you for your patience and just journeying with us through these seasons where we've had to resort to online services. We also want to welcome those who are connected with us for the first time. Maybe you are, uh, maybe you stumbled upon this online. Welcome. We greet you in Jesus' name. And we'd love to know that you crossed, came across this service. 
If you'd like to, you could type your name, city, and country where you're watching from. Let us know. We'll be delighted uh, to, to know that you were able to connect with us today. Thank you so much. We're going to listen to our regular Sunday announcements, and we'll be back right after that. Good morning and welcome to All People's Church. The vision of All People's Church is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation of India and to the nations. We are glad to have you worshipping with us. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the work and ministry through your tithes and offerings. Please use the information available at apcwo.org slash give to give as the Lord enables you. Right after today's service, our pastoral team will be available online to pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can connect to this online prayer room via Zoom on zoom.us slash join or you can use the Zoom app with the meeting ID 797-185-0459 and the passcode all in caps APC 2021. Zoom meeting ID 797-185-0459 and the passcode APC 2021. Please connect to Zoom and await your turn. Well, those were the announcements. For more information on upcoming events, do visit our church website, apcwo.org. Here, you can access the Sunday sermon recordings and sermon notes, download our free publications, get information on life groups, and much more. Now, sit back, relax, and be blessed as we spend this time in God's presence. I hereby publish the bans of marriage between Amos Kanakam, member of All People's Church, Bangalore, son of late Mr. Posham Kanakam and Mrs. Ramama. Amos is getting married to Shanti Munagapati, member of Mizpa Telugu Church and daughter of Mr. M. R. Chennaya and Mrs. Grace Mary. This wedding is to be solemnized at Mizpa Telugu Church, Bangalore on Thursday, 23rd September at 4 p.m. If any of you know of any reasons as to why these two persons should not be joined together in marriage, Kindly make it known in writing to Pastor Ashish Raichu, the senior pastor of this church. This is the first time of asking. Let's pray for Amos and Shanti. Father God, we commit Amos and Shanti into your mighty hands. As they prepare themselves, Lord, for this wedding day, and even as they prepare themselves to make this covenant with each other. Father God, we pray for your protection upon their lives. We pray that you would provide for all their needs according to your riches in glory. So we commit them and commit their families also into your mighty hands, Lord. We pray that you would lead them into all that you have for them. And in your precious name we pray. Amen. Greetings once again. Thank you for joining on the service today. The first Sunday of the month is when we uh, typically partake of the Lord's table. And so today we will do that. We will have Holy Communion at the end of the service. So in case uh, you uh, have not been able to 
get the elements ready. We request you in your homes, wherever you are, get some bread and some grape juice if possible. Or we know that uh, uh, sometimes situations are difficult. So even if you have some bread and water, that is fine. Just keep that. And uh, towards the end of the service, uh, we are going to uh, pray and partake of the Lord's table. We will do it in our homes or wherever we are and proclaim our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us on the cross and uh, do that together, even though you know, we, are, we are in different locations, but we will partake of the Lord's table to the, towards the end of the service. So please keep that ready and uh, we will uh, partake together. All right, it's time for us to do our declaration. Uh, as we do in our in-person services, we all stand up, we hold our Bibles high up in the air and we make our declaration. But uh, at home, uh, you're welcome to be seated. Uh, if you can get your Bible, just hold it up with me and uh, the words will come on the screen. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong. Let's say it like we mean it. Let's say it because we believe it. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and I channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit and I manifest the more glorious ministry of the spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Today, we are continuing in our study on our identity in Christ. We're talking about who we are in Christ. So as the Bible is telling us, we are new creation. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. So you are a new creation. It means you have a new identity. It also means you have inheritance, new inheritance, something that God has given to you, made available to you. It also means you and I live out of this inheritance, out of this identity and inheritance, uh, live out this new creation life. And that's what we are discovering little by little. So our, what we are doing is uncovering different aspects of the provisions that God has made to us as people who are in Christ. And then we are going to culminate the study in talking about how do we live this new creation life. Now, of course, along the journey, we'll be making mention of several things. Uh, and then we will wrap it up by saying, this is how God wants us to live as a new creation. Today, I would like to bring our attention to another aspect of our inheritance in Christ. That means this is something God has given to us. This is part of our identity. Uh, this is part of what God has made available to us. I want to talk to us about our redemption, that we are redeemed in Christ. So we'll just read a couple of verses, and then we will build up this understanding of redemption. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, we find this in several places in the epistles, and I'm just going to maybe read one or two verses, and then we will pick up a few more. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, the Apostle Paul says, in him, that is in Christ. That's what this whole series is about, about what we have in Christ. He says, in him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now, as we have pointed out in times past, look at the past tense of this verse. It says, in him, we have redemption. I mean, it is present, 
but it's already been done for us. We have, it's been given to us. We have redemption through his blood. So this is something you have as a child of God. Redemption is yours right now. Now, in that same chapter in Ephesians 1, later on in that chapter, he does talk about a future tense, a future portion of that inheritance. In Ephesians chapter 1, he says, until the redemption of the purchased possession. So that is telling us that there is a part of our redemption that's still out in the future, which we are going to enjoy. If we're going to have glorified bodies, we're going to be reigning with Christ in his uh, Manelian kingdom and, and, and so on. So that's out there in the future. It's there. It's a glory which shall be revealed to us. But we also have redemption here and now. In him, we have redemption. That's what we want to focus on. It's because it's something we are supposed to be able to enjoy. Something that we are able to walk in and say, this is mine. And walk in that redemption. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. It says, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus. Again, that phrase, in Christ. It says, you, God has brought you into Christ. Of him or because of him, you are in Christ Jesus. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So it's saying you are in Christ Jesus. God has brought you in Christ. And because you are in Christ, all who Christ is becomes yours. Christ becomes wisdom from God to you. Christ becomes your righteousness. Christ becomes your sanctification. And Christ is your redemption. That word redemption again. Now, just to help us understand, the, what is redemption? What is the Bible talking to us about when it says, you have redemption? Christ is your redemption, or we have, uh, we have redemption. What is the Bible talking about? Now, when you look at, when you study the Greek words used in the context of redemption, that means they are sometimes translated redeemed, or redeem, redemption, or ransomed, or purchased, bought. And you look at all these Greek words, uh, and, I, and the goal is not to pronounce these words and make mention of the words, but to summarize the meaning of them. The idea is that of purchasing a slave out of slavery by paying a price, setting that slave out of, free, free from slavery, and restoring that person to their original state. So redemption means to bring out of slavery and to bring into a place where a person is restored to their original state. Redemption, to redeem, to buy out of slavery by the paying of a ransom and to restore them to their original state. Redemption. And what God is telling us is this, that as a new creation, you are redeemed. That means you're no longer a slave to what was in the past. That is, you're no longer a slave. And we will look at some of the things we're redeemed from. The Bible tells us very clearly. That means you're, you're no longer subject to that. The ransom has been paid. And right here in Ephesians 1, it tells us through his blood, his blood is the price that was offered to God, saying, here is the price, I want them free. So you can imagine it like this, that we sinned, and so we had a great debt to pay before God. He's the judge. We owe a huge debt because we've sinned against God. But our sin, our disobedience to God, also put us in subjection to the devil, to darkness, to sin, Satan, and death. So we were slaves, and we hold a debt. And until that debt was paid, we could never come out of our bondage, our slavery. So the ransom price had to be paid before God to clear our debts. 
And that's his blood. It says, through his blood. So Jesus, the Bible says, he entered into the heavenly place with his own blood. Hebrews chapter 9, 12, 13, 14. And obtained eternal redemption for us. What did he do? He went to the Father. Father, this is my blood. The price that I'm paying to clear their debts, our debt. The moment our debt was cleared, we were taken out of everything that held us in bondage and set into a place of restoration before God, fully restored before God, in a place where we can say we are the redeemed of the Lord. Now, this is spiritual truth. This is spiritual reality. And as believers, we must un understand what have we been redeemed from and how do I walk in my redemption? The devil does not want the believer to walk in their redemption. He wants us to remain in subjection to sin, to Satan, to death. He wants us to be in subjection. He wants us to be like slaves. He doesn't want us to know the truth. And if we don't know the truth, we can never walk free. We still sit in our prison, even though the prison door is open. We walk around in our cells, around and around, thinking we are enslaved, when actually there's a door that's wide open and we can walk out any time. The devil wants to say, you're locked in your prison. You're locked in your prison. You are a captive. But the God is saying, in Christ, you have redemption. You've been ransomed, been set free. So let's look at this. Now, I want us to understand an important truth in Scripture. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 to 24, it says that we have come to Mount Zion, and I'm just reading very quickly, the city of the living God, believers, we, we are in Mount Zion, we belong to the city of the living God, to heavenly Jerusalem, an innumerable company of angels. We are part of the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. We are registered in heaven. We belong to, uh, to God, who is the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So he says, this blood of the new covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ, with which he put in place the new covenant, it says, this blood speaks better things than that of Abel. What does it mean, speak? The word speak simply means to proclaim, to announce. And it says, the blood of Jesus is announcing, is proclaiming. Of course, this is in the spiritual realm. Better things than that of the blood of Abel. He's contrasting. So you remember Abel was killed by his brother Cain, and his blood was on the ground. And the Lord said, his blood is crying out. So the blood of Abel was crying out for justice. But the blood of Christ is announcing the work is done. The blood of Abel was crying out, something has to happen to me, for me. The blood of Christ says, the work's been completed. It's not a cry for something, it's an announcement of a completion of a work, of, of a completed work. The blood of Abel was saying, justice has to be meted out. The blood of Christ says, everything's done. Redemption has been provided. So that's why the blood of Christ speaks better things than that of Abel. It's announcing redemption. That's why there is power in the blood of Christ. Because this blood is announcing better things. It's announcing our redemption. It's announcing our new covenant. All the spiritual realm understands the power of the blood of Jesus. But sad to say, the church of Jesus does not understand the power of the blood. What that blood is proclaiming in the realm of the spirit. That is why Satan is afraid of the blood. That's why every demon trembles about the blood. Because the blood is announcing our emancipation, our redemption, our complete deliverance. Satan has no more claim on us. 
because of the blood. It's the ransom that was paid. So let's just mention, and much of this truth is things many of us have heard. Let us mention what have we been redeemed from? First of all, we've been redeemed from Satan's dominion. Colossians 1, verse 13 and 14, it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He's saying, I'm taking you out of this kingdom, I'm putting you in my kingdom. So the kingdom of darkness has no right over the believer. And then it continues in verse 14, in whom we have redemption. So this is what redemption is about. Taken out of darkness, brought into light. Taken out of slavery, brought into a place where God wants us to be in his kingdom. That's redemption. So he says, in him we have redemption through his blood. So first, we are redeemed from the powers of darkness. As a believer, you must know, Satan has no right over you. You know, believers keep saying, oh, the devil is tormenting me. The devil is attacking me. Why don't you just stand up and let the blood speak? Why don't you stand up and say, Satan, you have no right here. Because the Bible says, God has delivered me from the power of darkness. And so Satan has no right to torment my mind or my body or my finances or my home or my family or my children or anything. That concerns me because I've been delivered from the power of darkness. He rescued me, paid such a great price to redeem me, set me free from the powers of darkness. The child of God, as a new creation in Christ, you need to know in him you have redemption, which means you are delivered from the powers of darkness, from the dominion of Satan and his demonic powers. You're set free. Secondly, because you are, his you are redeemed by God, it automatically makes us the property of God, the one who paid the ransom. So you are God's property. You are God's purchased possession. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, it says, you were bought at a price. That's the same idea of redemption, being bought at a price, being bought with a ransom. You were bought with a price, meaning you've now become the purchased property, the purchased possession, the one who bought you, Jesus Christ. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God owns you, spirit, soul, and body. And Satan has no right to trespass God's property. No right over your spirit, soul, or body. But many of us as believers... We tolerate when the enemy comes trespassing. We put up with it. Say, no, stand up and fight. Say, no, no trespassing. I'm God's purchased possession. I'm God's property. I've been bought with a price. My spirit, soul, and body belong to God. Number three, the Bible also says we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3 and verse 13, Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law. What does that mean? That means we are redeemed both from the law, the weight of the law, the law itself, and all the curses that come because of the violation of the law. That means I'm no longer subject to the law, and neither am I subject to the curses that are being mentioned in the law for those who violate the law. And Deuteronomy 28 itemizes the curses of the law. You find all kinds of things. You find sickness as a curse of the law. You don't find it listed under blessings. So don't you ever say, God blessed me with sickness. God doesn't need to bless you with sickness. God himself has put sickness under the curse. So you have no right, theologically or otherwise, to move it from a curse to a blessing. Never do that. Don't rewrite the word of God. Deuteronomy 28 lists sickness under the curses. Let it remain there. So under the curse, there is sickness, there is lack, there is mental torment, physical oppression, all kinds of things. It's all listed under the curse. The Bible is saying, God has redeemed us from the curse of the law. 
redeem for you from all of that. And that's why when we stand up against sickness, disease, we look at it as a curse. It's not for me because I'm redeemed from it. I refuse to accept it. It's my redemption right, my redemption provision, my redemption blessing. So we stand up against that. Number four, we are redeemed from every lawless deed. Titus 2 and verse 14. Jesus gave himself for us. Why? That he might redeem us. That means bring us out of bondage from every lawless deed. What lawless deed is holding you a captive? Understand that the blood is announcing that you've been redeemed from it. That means there's no lawless deed, no sinful deed that can hold you as a believer. I want us to know that as believers, we can walk free from sin. Christ gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed so that we could be and purify us for his own special people, sell us for good works. So you're redeemed. You can look at any lawless deed, any sinful thing that's controlling you and say, I'm redeemed from you. You have no right over me. I'm redeemed through the blood. Next, number five. We are also redeemed from this present evil age. Galatians 1, 3 and 4, it says that, verse 4, He gave Himself for our sins, Jesus, that He might deliver us or redeem us, set us free from this present evil age. That means the world doesn't have to dominate you. The influence of this world doesn't have to control you. See, so much of the church is still living under the influence of the world. And we don't know it, and we think that's the way we're supposed to, but we don't have to. The Bible says that we are delivered from this present evil age. Just two more, then we've got to get into prayer. We are redeemed from the fear of death. Hebrews 2, verse 14 and 15 says, Jesus destroyed the one who had the power of death, Verse 15, and release those who through fear of death were in bondage all their lifetime. So as a believer, you don't have to fear death. Death is just taking us to the Lord. It's just getting boarding a flight to be with Him. You don't have to fear death. And of course, we want to live our life through to complete the work God has given to us. We want to live faithful lives Finish the work He's given to us. Strong, healthy lives. Finish it. And once we're done, step on the flight. But you don't have to fear death. And the Bible says here, Jesus said it's free from the fear of death. And lastly, the Bible also says in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, He's redeemed us from every aimless conduct that is manner of life, that has been passed down from our forefathers. Of course, he's, Peter is writing to the Jews who were dispersed throughout parts of Asia at that time. And he's reminding them that through the blood, they've been redeemed, set free from whatever has been handed down, the aimless way of life. Now, it meant something to them, to those Jews. But it applies to all of us today in our own context. If the blood of Christ set them free from what was handed down from their forefathers, it set us free from what was handed down to us from our forefathers. That means there could have been things prior generations were trapped in, whatever it might be. But the blood of Christ is that dividing line. It doesn't cross that line. We are redeemed from the aimless conduct, manner of life, things that what they practice, follow, whatever, by the precious blood of Christ. So you can say, I'm redeemed from those kinds of things, which, you know, maybe parents or grandparents or great-grandparents practiced, followed, believed, were affected by, were troubled by. I'm free from it. There are no generational bondages over my life. I'm free because of the blood of Christ. So I want us to know you have redemption because of His blood. 
And his blood today is announcing your redemption. You're redeemed from the power of darkness. Yo, you belong 100% to God. You and I are redeemed from the curse of the law. You and I are redeemed from every lawless deed. We are redeemed from this present evil age. We are redeemed from the fear of death. We are redeemed from every generational thing that may have uh, been handed down to us. We are redeemed. We are free. You are free. In Christ, you have redemption. The blood is speaking of your redemption. And Christ himself, as we read, Christ is your redemption. Nobody can question it. All you have to say is, Jesus is my redemption. His blood has redeemed me. And therefore, the Bible tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Affirm your faith in the redemption that you have. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You say it. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am redeemed from every curse of the law. My family is redeemed. My children are redeemed. Uh, everything about me is redeemed. Say it. Testify to what the blood of Jesus has done for you. We know this scripture, Revelation 12, 11, that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So when you and I testify, the blood is speaking, but you also need to speak. You announce what the blood is announcing. The blood is announcing your redemption. You proclaim your redemption. And the Bible says we overcome the enemy as we do that. Today we're going to pray. We're going to let the worship team lead us. And we're going to pray and partake of the Lord's table together. And during this time, as we partake of the table of the Lord, remember Paul is saying we are proclaiming the Lord's death. It's a great opportunity for you to say, God, I believe I am the redeemed of the Lord. And so everything that I'm redeemed from, I want it out of my life. I'm not going to tolerate it in my life. I'm redeemed from every lawless deed. I'm redeemed from every curse of the law. I'm redeemed from the powers of darkness. I'm redeemed from the fear of death. I'm redeemed from whatever that's been, whatever troubled generations past doesn't have to trouble me. I'm redeemed from it. So I want you today, as we partake of the Lord's table, to say, God, I receive my blessing of redemption. I want to walk in it. I want to live it. Because the Bible says we have it now. Yes, there's some, some that we'll receive later, but this is ours now. We can live in it. You can step out of that prison door and walk as a free person. Do not have to stay in the prison when the door is open. Walk out. Be free.
Thank you, worship team, for leading us. We're going to partake of the Lord's table. And wherever you are, I hope you have the bread and grape juice or bread and water, it's fine. We're just going to pray with these elements. There's nothing magical about the bread or the water or the juice. It's just regular earthly elements. But what it represents, once we pray, it represents something. It represents what Christ did for us on the cross. It represents our covenant with God and it represents, it is our proclamation of what the blood has done for us. Now that moment, I want you to say, God, I receive the full blessings of my redemption. In Christ, I have redemption. In Christ, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I receive it. Let's pray together. Father, we just join our hearts together right now and pray. I pray with every person, God, who's connected to this service right now and in their homes or wherever they are as they prepare to partake of the Lord's table. God, we do this humbly. We do this in a simple way, God, with this bread and juice or bread and water that people have. We sanctify these ordinary elements. But we do this in obedience to what Jesus taught us, to proclaim the Lord's death. That as we eat this bread and drink this cup, it is a cup of blessing. It enables us to partake of what Christ finished for us. And Father, we heard today that in Christ, we are redeemed. Christ is our redemption. And we are asking for the full blessing of redemption to invade our lives, cover our lives, that we will walk in it. Make this word good in every person's life, Father. Let every work of the enemy be destroyed, even as we proclaim the Lord's death together. The Lord Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body that is broken for you, that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake, please, of the bread together. The Lord Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant that was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says that we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel's. It's announcing better things. It's announcing that we are in covenant with God. It's announcing that the work is Completed that we are the redeemed of the Lord. The blood itself is a redemption price. We are saying we are redeemed. And so, Father, let the full provision of this redemption affect every person as we drink this cup together now. Thank you in Jesus' name. Let's partake of the cup together. Father, in Jesus' name, even according to your word, we believe that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That every curse that is listed there in Deuteronomy 28, we are set free from it. We are set free from sickness, disease, and from financial problems and problems in the home and problems in the marriage and problems in the lives of our children or our grandchildren, problems in our businesses and problems in our workplaces and problems in our social relationships. All of those things are part of the curse of the law. So in Jesus' name, we refuse all of this. And instead we say, we are redeemed to be blessed. 
The blessing of the Lord floods our lives in the name of Jesus. That God silences the voice of the accusers. That God silences the voice of those who speak against us. We are blessed. We are highly favored. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Lord, you said the ransom of the Lord shall return and they will come forth with singing unto Zion. Your word says, God, we have come to Mount Zion. So I pray that there will be singing in the lives of your people, God. There'll be great joy in every individual's life, in every home, every family, every marriage, every household. Let them come forth with singing today because of the redemption, blessing, It comes into our lives. Father, thank you for watching over your word and fulfilling it for every one of your children. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for being with us on the service today. We'd love to hear from you. So if you could take a moment and send an email to testimony at apcw.org. Tell us what the Lord has done in your life through these services it'll encourage our hearts and we will be able to celebrate with you may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our heavenly father and the sweet fellowship of his spirit be with each of us always amen Took a step for me.